Hey, what's up everybody? So today we're going to be talking about whether a pharmacist can refuse to fill your prescription. So it's a great, uh, great kind of thought experiment. You know, you're, you're trying to get a prescription filled. Is it even allowed? Like, I have heard from a lot of patients, like, I got a prescription from my doctor. It means you have to fill it. There are a lot of instances where pharmacists can actually refuse to fill a prescription. And the big caveat here is that pharmacists want to fill your prescription simply because it's the easiest way to get you out of the pharmacy and move on to the next person. So in the end, in a retail pharmacy, basically you just want to move on to the next prescription, get the person out of the pharmacy, close the gates on time and go home. So there are only a, a few kind of instances where a pharmacist refused to fill your prescription or it might be delayed or delayed for a long period of time. The most basic reason is uh, legal reasons, then there are clinical reasons and practical reasons. So legal reasons are there's something wrong with a prescription and usually that's a prescription that is brought to the pharmacy. So doctors in, in their haste they might fill the prescription out wrong. So a prescription is a legal document so it has to have certain pieces of information on it for it to actually be a prescription. So a uh, doctor writes a prescription, they put your name on there, they date it, and they write what the prescription is, the drug and the directions and the strength and everything, and they don't sign it. That's actually not a prescription. So if the doctor doesn't sign the prescription, that's, that's illegal and the pharmacist can refuse to fill it. Now pharmacists have a lot of um, ways in, in the law where they can fix these kind of problems like if the prescription isn't signed, for most prescriptions, you can actually call the doctor and get the prescription that way. So basically, that prescription would simply become a telephone prescription. So you get a prescription for some innocuous drug, it's not signed, you just call the doctor and say, uh, you didn't sign it, is this okay? The problem comes when you get these, these issues and it's after doctor's hours and it's, you know, your the patients are aggressive or they're rude or, so you can run into a lot of situations where it's like, you know, I'm sorry the doctor didn't sign it. And especially for pain medicine, a lot of times patients will become very agitated because they, they came from the doctor, they might be in pain or they might, if it's a long-term pain medicate, pain medication it might be withdrawing from the medication and they come in they bring a prescription they were just waiting in the doctor's office and now they're bringing a prescription and it's not signed and you tell them that and they can become very agitated and they might not believe you so legal reasons are pretty cut and dry you can't really get around that um, you can call the doctor's office but for narcotic pain medications uh, if it's not signed, it's invalid. It, the pharmacist can't take that over the phone. So there really is no recourse if the doctor doesn't do what they have to do. Sign and date the prescription. Um, I think most states, they require an address for the patient, a non-PO box address. So a lot of times I've had patients who had PO boxes, they're concerned about their privacy, um, which doesn't exist anymore. I don't think really privacy exists anymore, but um, they pretend that they have it and so they'll they'll share their lives on Facebook but they don't want to put their address um, their easily googleable address so they'll put a PO box on there and that's actually not valid for an address for a controlled prescription so uh, there are clinical reasons a pharmacist won't fill your prescription so there's a few times in a pharmacist's career where they might get a prescription that is just not a few times but there are some where they might outright fill it they might outright not fill it so that's like if the dosages are crazy or if the directions are crazy it doesn't happen very much and a lot of times that's just a call to the doctor's office to fix the issue and say are you sure you wanted to do this i had one where uh it was for an ep epileptic child and uh it was a nurse practitioner wrote on there and it was 10 times what the what the uh, child had been taking the pre in the previous prescription so it was like it was supposed to be one milliliter per day 
and they wrote 10 milliliters per day. And uh, I actually called the nurse and she gave me a lot of attitude actually. And uh, that potentially could have, could have sent the child to the hospital or even worse. So I, there are some instances where you will catch things and it's like, well that's crazy. And you know, pharmacists are tired or whatever, they might not catch it and that would be really bad. So there are some instances where you're like, well I kind of like caught a really big, really big issue there. There are drug interactions like kind of a famous one is nitrates with like Viagra. They cause a, high, a really low blood pressure. So that's another reason where, where we can decide not to fill a prescription. Uh, a lot of times this is just we're delaying it because we want to call the doctor and make sure they're aware of the issue. Um, usually if the doctor signs off on it, we can fill it and that means we just put a note and we say we spoke to the doctor and they said it was fine. So if the patient dies and you spoke to the, you know, you spoke to the doctor, it's really kind of on the doctor because they, they were aware of the interaction. Now if, if it is that serious, like if it's obviously going to cause harm to the patient, um, we wouldn't fill it. But most of these issues are solved by talking to the doctor's office. Now there are practical reasons we don't fill prescriptions. Um, we, like right now there's a huge shortage on Adderall. Uh, so you might have a, a shortage. And then kind of a, a secret is like, you might have inconsistent supplies. So you might not want to take a new prescription because you already have people on it. So um, like right now, a lot of people are trying to take uh, Ozempic for weight loss. Uh, so some pharmacies will say, oh, well, I, I don't have it. Well, they can get it, but they're not sure how much they can get. And there's some more controversial reasons why a pharmacist might not fill a prescription. Um, some, some pharmacists are personally biased against like um, filling pain, pain prescriptions, like long-term pain prescriptions because uh, a lot of these patients that are on the long-term pain prescriptions, it seems like for us, it really seems like you're kind of treating the withdrawal because they've been on the medication for so long. You're probably not treating pain at that point because the, bo the body's probably already adapted to the medication. So it's questionable how um, effective long-term pain management, like oxycodone 30s throughout the day. Um, a lot of times doctors, it seems that some doctors get into that kind of practice in order to make money uh, because it's lucrative and they can charge cash from the patients and it gets sketchy. Like I've, we've had a lot of local doctors who are in this um, pain management and they wound up getting in trouble with the, with the authorities. On the, on the flip side of that, there are patients, and I do think most people would benefit from getting off of long-term pain management, there, but there are patients that need to be on it. Um, so s some pharmacists are more strict than others, and there's a lot of reasons why a pharmacist might not fill that kind of prescription. Uh, some are the doctors from a, a, a long ways away, that's considered a red flag. Um, the patients seeing numerous different doctors, um, maybe how the patient presents themselves. Do they seem to be intoxicated? Uh, which ha happens a lot actually. I don't know, there's a lot of different things that you pick up on as a pharmacist. And then uh, looking at the prescription itself, does it even seem valid? So a lot of pharmacists will just look at it and they say, I it doesn't really seem like it's a valid prescription. Uh, and they'll just not fill up from that point. And then they can go a step further, take the prescription, and then do a lot of research. The problem is, and especially uh, depending on where you are, you might be getting a lot of these prescriptions. So you just simply don't have time to do a lot of research on each prescription. So a lot of them might get turned down and they might even be, you know, good prescriptions. So. Uh, there's a lot of reasons, some, some other controversial reasons pharmacists might not um, fill a prescription. Some uh, pharmacists are deeply religious and they don't want to contribute to any abortions. So there are some pills that are used to help uh, abortions 
and some pharmacists aren't comfortable with that. Um, so, you know, that's obviously a heavy issue. And then I've even heard more before, uh, I don't know if this even happens now, but some pharmacists aren't comfortable filling birth control. Now, I've never met a pharmacist that isn't comfortable filling birth control. The abortion pills, uh, I have, I have met some that I kind of, that wouldn't say that they were uncomfortable with it, but you kind of felt like they were. So, um, so there's like a lot of different reasons why pharmacists not, might not fill your prescriptions. Um, so I hope you all found this interesting. Thanks a lot for watching.